Welcome to the Clock Tower. I'm Brandon here with Colton, and today we're previewing the Bang Dream deck that we did earlier this week on the channel. And we're playing it today against what, Colton? I'm on Kanata Marine. I don't play this deck very much. I'm not good at it. I'm sorry in advance. No worries. Um, starting off, I was able to get the Cherry on board, so I can do a little extra mill early. Um, I have the anti-change bomb as well in hand kind of preparing for that matchup for what we'll see later although you do rush me to one on turn zero so getting a little uh getting a little bit further in the game than really hoping to at this point really like an extra turn at zero but yeah i think you and i both would and um this is going to be a theme hmm <laughs> I'm sitting at zero three, and you actually respond to this really effectively because you are gonna actually end up with your combo. So being able to combo at turn two it, when you get rushed like that is extremely valuable. Like obviously, you know, it costs you some resources and some extra clocking to do so, but the fact that you can at least present this and that you are pushing damage right back at me as well in deck one is gonna go a long way. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think I was definitely really set up to be able to respond pretty effectively here, but just at the kind of point in space, I'm like, uh, I'm like barely pushing you to one. I'm like, okay, this is not this is not great. I'm already out five climaxes. Uh, you're probably gonna stick some, quite a bit of damage on me. I'm just looking at this board, not super keen on what I'm seeing here, but at the same time. You're also already out three climaxes in waiting room, so I'm like maybe. You're probably also gonna hold climax for Kanata anyway, so. But do you know what? Uh, you know what Kanata does not have, before level two. A lot of playables. I am up here struggling with hand because you have to hold so many pieces just to make. Kanata happen. And they're pieces that aren't necessarily, like, aside from being able to just bond into the level 3, like, it's not necessarily super easy to have the hand size, especially because I did not, um, I didn't really get any useful pieces off of the, uh, off of the Aqua Ricky. Um, what's really interesting here is actually when you use that attack, you kind of assign power to the back row, so that way you can be under for the Aqua Ricky. Like, pretty... Uh, pretty solid strategy to try to get cards in hand, though. Well, I know that you have the the bomb. I know that you have the uh, the bottom decker for level zeros. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it's more of like I will concede. I will concede the board. I'm three out of twelve here. I know I need another turn before level two. Ideally, you're not trying to Kanata on turn three. Um, just because you don't have the stock, especially if you needed to use the Aqua Ricky or the On Death Ricky Brainstorm, any of that, you just don't have the stock. So I'm hoping that I cancel some of this, that I maintain a damage lead, and can just draw into slash throw down some playables, get to four stock, and then I can try to Kanata on the following turn. Um, and that does not work. It does not work out for me at all. Spoilers, Golden. Spoilers. I do go up to eight in hand because I figure I can filter out a card that way. Mm -hmm. But I also was like two and five, so I was like expecting that I was probably going to trigger twice here. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do only manage to trigger once, so I know I know I have a cancel on top and going back about six out of twenty-five. So. And I have one stock, I'm at level two, and I'm going to go back really, really poorly. I was really hoping to hit my refresh point. Usually that's not something that Kanata worries about too much. But in a game like this, where Kanata's getting rushed, it can get into really, really bad deck states, and that's what's going on here. I know I'm only going to go back with, like, five. So I'm going to play a Kanata, I'm going to get one down just so that I have some kind of plusing so that I can at least get into my Marine. 
The hope here is that by slamming the CX, I can push enough damage, maybe get you at least into mid-late level 2, mm -hmm. so that I can you know have a chance to close with double Marine, because I already know I'm going to eat a ton of damage on the backswing. No, that makes sense. Russian Kanata Marine works, guys. Hmm. Like, it, it's pretty effective, because Kanata needs some turns to actually, like, get its pieces together. Pro tip. Pro tip, if Kanata Marine doesn't cancel, you win. Um... That too. That, 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 also, that also doesn't help. Um, the refresh point yeah, here I... being a CX was, was pretty... Uh, was pretty... No, I needed that five to stick for real. I needed that five to stick and um, watching that triple cancel happen. It was like, okay, I think I just die here because there's no way that, I mean, because I know that you know, I'm going to go to two, two here. Once I resolve this refresh, I'm going to have six in deck. Like I'm going to three next turn, almost certainly or five in deck rather, because that wasn't supposed to be in refresh. And then I refresh a CX. So I'm four out of 34. This is not good. Yeah, yeah. Like, But that's also one of the fundamental struggles of Kanata, right? Is that, like, you, you really want to start playing at level 2, and in so doing, like, until you resolve double or triple Kanata, your compression might not be very good. So there is that window, right? There's that window where you can punish Kanata Marine for not having that compression, and you can get ahead in the damage race. It'll put it back, because then it's you know going to have a board full of two souls down at level two, slam CX. It's going to push its damage once it gets there, but if you can get ahead in the damage race, you give yourself a much better opportunity. I actually canceled a little bit here, and that's not good for me, all told, because I had already prepared myself for level three by grabbing double Marine. So I have to Ricky myself into three. So when we were actually playing the game, I used it like it was an on-play Ricky. Because I thought it was a non-play Ricky. It's not. It's on death. So imagine that I overplayed it with one of the other things that comes down and then just proc it at the time I was supposed to proc it. Doesn't necessarily change what I have access to for the end game. It doesn't really change it at all, actually. But I played that out of order because I'm not a Kanata player. And I don't always know what I'm doing. No worries. Like, it... For as much as it makes a difference here, it could have been the brainstorm in the back row as well. So, and I also don't want to play this game another time. Yeah, we played this game way too many times, um, mostly because I don't know how to play this deck very effectively. So that's on me. But in any case, like this game is extremely over. I am one out of seventeen going back. It did not matter that I stuck this five. All you have to do, all you have to do, is present a single lane of combo. Which I already know that you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Which and at this with that point, I was also only two CXs in waiting room, so I could have um, double chew two'd here mm -hmm. as well, and to be able to heal down if I didn't if you didn't set the five. Yeah. So. But yeah, no. Even then, like I mean, I I have one CX in there. You just need to stick seven. Slamming any climax with any additional burn will do the job. Yep. Uh, which is what ends up happening. Um, I am only able to get one of the combo pieces down, um, in part because I was not preparing for three. But um, overall, I think this deck has a lot of uh, opportunities and with its different kinds of tools. It has a lot of things that can kind of respond pretty well to where things are at. It has some pretty decent power thresholds. Um, so because it has all of these tools and all these things in play, it has pretty decent access to a lot of these things that... Mm -hmm it's able to effectively get the pieces it wants at the places it wants to realistically have the board state it wants to respond yeah. to whatever it's facing. And, you know, my inability to play Kata Tamari notwithstanding, Bang Dream's in a really decent position right now because it has all of these defensive pieces, right? Not only does it have the top end, the anti-auto damage, and the anti-burn counter, which are all good, it also has, like, we saw the 1-1 one -one memory Adachi that just removes things from the game. That's really powerful. It has the two one bunts for luck, just a stock swap on a stick for one at level two, which is extremely good rate. It has a memory kit counter defensively. 
which allows it to, with the Chew 2, get up to, what, 16 on defense. So that can just memory kick a Marine if Chew 2 comes down first. It can memory kick an Escanor, which just shuts off the entire Escanor combo, which is really effective. A lot of stuff right now, the Argo in the upcoming Alice set is a prime example, super dependent on auto damage and doesn't necessarily have a great response to Neg Soul. So Bang Dream has access to all these really good defensive tools and the combo burns. Bang Dream is in a better position than I think people are giving it credit for. It's not top tier, but if you're playing it at Springfest, you have enough outs to the best matchups that I think that I think that you can have some real success with this deck. Speaking of Alice, that's the next deck that Brandon will be building. That is a week from Tuesday, the week before we will have our regular clock talk followed by five cards, five minutes for the new Sword Art set. Gameplay for that Alice deck in two weeks. Until next time, thank you so much for joining us. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and have a good one. We'll see you then.